Ladies and gentlemen, a show of hands. Have the BBC done the right thing? Brundle's in charge. Cool, you're what? brave. <laughs> Bloody, there weren't very many hands up. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> Actually, someone's been ringing me. I think they're going to say something different. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Jonathan? <laughs> um, you're going to be busy, aren't you? You're going, to be, you're going to be running from the grid up to the commentary box. And some of these big venues, the commentary box is miles away. Yeah, I read somewhere some ridiculous article that would be uh, unimaginable strain, which for me, unimaginable strain is fighting in Afghanistan or bringing up a child in the middle of Africa. That's what that means to me. Not chatting to a few mates on the grid and then going and watching a sport I love from the TV commentary box. I've got the best job in the world. Uh, I will do half the grid walks or something. I'm ready to change on that. I've done that for 14 years. There's only so many ways you can run up and down 24 cars and a safety car and keep coming up with fresh material and it's not actually in my nature to go barging in and being rude in other people's interviews or well, you, you do a very good job then. I know, but you, <laughs> I just have to because I'm uh, I'm You're I've such got, a liar. I got No, it's not it's not in my you nature. Do actually, you but shamelessly barge them out. I, of the I way. know I do, but if I've got a crash helmet on I don't mind, but uh, it's not it's it's not my style really, but I do do it and I love talking and and 99 out of 100 people who come up to me anywhere in the world go, "We love the grid walk." or the pit walk, or whatever they think it's called, but it's called the grid walk because I'm on the grid. And so I, it's, it's become my signature, so of course I'll do it. There are some tracks where the geography from the, the grid to the commentary box is, you know, sometimes I walk a bit, then we have to take a scooter through a tunnel, somebody's waiting at the bottom of a lift, press the button, I go up nine floors, get in the commentary box just before the race starts. So uh, I won't be doing that, but I'm, I'm happy to give up a few grid. At, at ITV, I used to do two out of three which is about right, frankly. But that, that's not the story, really. Uh, I've got, I've got a, a new and important job of being the colour commentator. It, it's a different job, so I will do it differently. Uh, and I've got David coming up. Between us, we've started over 400 Grand Prix and attended over 700. We know our sport, and we've got to entertain, and we've got to inform. And I know we'll be comfortable with each other, because uh, like Mark and I, we are very good mates with DC. And... I, I, we haven't seen the best of DC by a long way yet. He's, uh, I think that sort of ping pong match at the beginning is not his forte. He'll still be doing that, but uh, it, that's not his best work. DC's got such a knowledge of F1 and such banter to go with it that I'm confident he'll have plenty to say about a race. And I can do the shouty bits when I have to. And I'll, you know, yes, it's a different job, so I will do it differently. And But I'm not going to pretend I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to give him gormless questions like, oh, that right rear tyre looks a bit odd, doesn't it, David? It's, uh, we'll, we'll discuss it amongst us. Uh, we'll agree, we'll disagree, we'll throw to the pit lane, and we'll tell the story of Formula One. <laughs>